Hello guys, I'm Shirley Park from We Learn to Share and this would be my second class on data visualization. So this is specifically the point that we left off last class and I would just like to continue with explaining the Titanic challenge. So previous class, the, during the previous class, we discussed multiple factors that are very important in data visualization, some of the alternative resources you could use and some of the basics in reading a coding file. And for today's class, I want to start off with discussing the importance of understanding your data set. Because last class, when we read the file train data, for example, there were a lot of these keys, values, and column titles, etc. But then at this point, it's really hard for you to understand what, you, what each of the points and columns mean and what the significance of that. And for you to know that, it's important for you to refer back to the Kaggle.com Titanic Challenge website and go to the data section. When you scroll down, there will be a subtitle called Data Dictionary and Variable Notes. You want to read both of these columns very specifically because these will tell you the meanings of each of the points in the data set. For example, let's refer to the first survival um, column here. When you go back to train data, we would be able to see that there is a column called survived and of key values like 0 and 1, 1, 1, 0, for example. At this point, it's really hard for you to understand which of the numbers would mean like whether one survived or not. In that case, you want to refer back to the Kaggle.com website and see the key. And it's pretty self-explanatory here because zero would mean that um, the person didn't survive and one would be that the person did survive. And these would be the very sp specific details you would have to fully understand the ears. There are other columns that are referred to the ticket class, refer which refers to which ticket um, the person had, the gender, the age and ears, a uh, number of parents, um, embarkation period, cabin number, etc. The variable notes also pretty much tell you the same thing upon what P class is, what age would mean, what um, SA, a SIP, um, SP would mean, etc., etc. So assuming that you already read through all of those very key important data and understanding the coding and challenge itself, I want to introduce you other ways you could better understand your data. Um, I'm going to be using train data, which was the first file that we read, which was titled as train.csv. First, um, type in the title of the data set or the, um, the variable that you... Um, Put input it last time, which would be train data. The first type of um, coding thing I want to introduce you is describe, which would tell, which would tell you the gen general specifics of that data set. When you try to run the specific coding, there will be the result. So here, the count would refer to the total count of the column and the passenger ID, the mean would be the same thing, the average, and then etc, cetera, etc, cetera, down to the maximum value in that specific column set. So this would just be a very brief introduction or just a brief coverage as to what the data has. Next, what I want to show you is um, info. So you, again, you type in the title, data frame, name, and then info. <clears throat> and as you can pretty much um, presume from that, it would provide you basic information on the columns, in the number, the order, etc. So each of these columns will refer to the specific non-null count or the data type, which is called the D type. So the non-null count refers to the total amount of key values that exist within that column that is of non-null value, which means that there is a specific um, value to it. So I'll be um, discussing this in later on points, why non-null or null points are important in sorting data visualization and creating graphs, or etc. And lastly, D-types would refer to the very predominant data types that exist within each of these columns. And moving on to that, because you just referred to the non-null, now we want to see how many null data there are in each of the columns. For us to know that, again, you would have to type in train data, which is the data frame name, and type 
is no and then again sum this would mean that we want to get the total sum value of the um, new values that is existent in within this data frame so if you run this law as well you'll be able to see the details for example the passenger id column would have no new values whereas the age column would have 177 of them and this would be the specifics as how we can know and sort all of these new values the reason why new, knowing the total count of new values is because we want to exclude those values when making very important considerations in the type of conclusions we make, especially for creating the submission file. Um, I'll be discussing the important points when we touch upon the um, changing or replacing new values with other average values, and that, that was, those would be discussed in later periods of our classes. And for today's class, we just went over the brief specifics in counting the data. And for next class, we will be touching upon other specific columns and on discussing understanding those points. Thank you.